Hello, everyone, and welcome. Um, great to see all of you tonight. Um, this is Sabrina Paganoni, and I'm speaking from the Healy Center. I know we only have a few um, a few meetings left before we break at the end of the year. So really great to see many of you. I see people are joining from the waiting room. So thank you for joining. And if we can go right into the next slide, it's really a pleasure for me to introduce Mia Resendez, our phenomenal uh, primary coordinator for the platform trial. I really had the pleasure of working with Mia very closely for the last couple of years uh, and really great to, to have her lead the, the team and really uh, she's one of our most experienced clinical research coordinators. So I'll ask Mia to take it from here and, and just tell us more about her experience with the trial. Mia? Hi, Sabrina. Um, we can go to the next slide. Um, I put together just a couple of slides. So my name is Mia. Um, as Sabrina said, I've been working on the platform trial for two years now. I can't even believe it. Um, and I absolutely love being a coordinator. Um, and we can go to the next slide. Um, so what I was going to say is we really can't do it alone. So on the platform trial, we have four coordinators. Um, it's myself, who I've been here for two years, and then Catherine and Suhina. They've been here for about a year. Um, and then we have our lovely Vishni. She's our platform expanded access program coordinator. And Vishni has been here for two years as well. Um, basically, as coordinators, we are um, running the visits with patients that are in our trial. We are scheduling them. We are making sure that everybody can come to the visits and do their parts. Um, and everything that we do during the visit, we have to run back to our desks and put into the computer, basically. Um, I love that we can work with the neurologists and the PTs and the SLPs and, of course, the patients. Um, we really do have the best job. It's very hectic, but it's very fun. Um, next slide. So just a quick regimen breakdown. I know everyone is probably a pro on this, but on the coordinator front, the differences between regimen um, A through D and then regimen E are um, very broad. There's a lot of differences. Um, first with regimens A through D, we are running visits every four to eight weeks. So we're not really seeing people as often. We are doing phone calls in between, but it's, um, it's not as close contact. Um, and patients are coming into the Healy Center, which if you've been there, um, you walk into the lobby, it's a nice warm lobby area. Um, the exam rooms are more like a family practice exam room. So they're comfortable, um, very private. And then also participants are dosing themselves at home. So we send them home with a bottle of perdopidine or something. Um, and then in four weeks, they come back. We assume they've been taking it. Of course, we have checkpoints and we make sure that um, they're accountable. But basically, we, they're kind of on their own. And um, people, some people love that. Some people love Regimen E. Um, and the differences with Regimen E are that you're coming in person every four to five weeks. We really get to know the participants. Um, I'm sorry, you're coming in every week for the first four to five weeks and you're visiting the TCRC, which you get to know the lovely nurses there. That's the Translational and Clinical Research Center. I mean, that's at the main hospital, so it's more hospital like there are hospital beds and um, nurses everywhere. So you kind of get to know um, on the patient side a lot more of the team and on the research side, we get to, lot, to know a lot more of the participants, which is awesome. Um, and you also have a visiting nurse coming for all your infusions. So you're not really doing things on your own. You get to know more people, um, you make more relationships. Uh, next slide, please. So how is Regimen E different for us otherwise? Um, like I said, we see people all the time. We're seeing them every week. Um, we get to work with the TCRC. So on the coordinating side, we not only have to follow our protocols, um, but we have to follow their protocols too. So there's some more intricate um, planning that goes into working with the TCRC. Um, and you might see us, if you're in regimen E and on the TCRC ever, you might see us talking to the nurses and trying to go through the protocol and figure out if we're all doing things correctly because um, people are always changing and um, we just have to work with a broad group of people. So it's awesome and it keeps us on our toes. Um, and same with home infusions. We're working with an outside organization, PCM Trials, who we love. Um, they've been amazing, but then uh, we're working with someone that we maybe have not met. Um, it's more of a remote extension of our study team, um, and it's a learning curve because um, you have to kind of discuss participants without really knowing each other, um, and we have a lot of trust in them, so we do love them. And then also, there is lots of data 
I said data, 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 because there's so much. Um, because we're seeing people every week and getting to know everything about them, we're also getting to know about like maybe a headache that they had. We have to record that and um, a new medication that they took. And when someone's coming in like every four to eight weeks, we're not really hearing about all that small stuff, even though we want to. Um, people forget if they had a headache on December 5th and then they're in on December 30th. So um, there is so much more data in regimen E. We take vitals, I think four to five times for every infusion during each infusion. So there's a lot more inputting, a lot more writing down on source documentation, and we ask you guys a lot more questions. So um, that being said, we can go to the next slide. Um, we're, proud we're proud partners in research. Um, we love the extra work. Regimen E has been um, very intensive. And at first we were a little nervous, but we've come to love it and we've become experts. So um, I'm super excited to continue working with Regimen E. Um, especially as enrollment is coming um, to a close eventually. So um, it's been lovely. And we love getting to know our participants on a deeper level. Um, everybody that comes in is different. Everybody has a different personality and it's so amazing working with people. I think if you're a coordinator and you're not a people person, then you really shouldn't be a coordinator because you got to get to know people. Um, you meet people from all different backgrounds. And um, I think every time I have a visit with someone, I learn a new life lesson. People teach you so much, not just about ALS, but about life in general and experiences. Um, and when you get to know someone on a deeper level like that, it just makes you more motivated to work towards an effective treatment for ALS. So every new participant that we have, we grow to love them and it just makes us that more vigorous in our work. Um, we want everything to be great. We always want things to be perfect, but it's never going to happen. So there are some mistakes along the way, but as long as a person is safe and comfortable um, and they can't see what's going on behind the scenes, then we're perfectly happy with that. Um, otherwise, being a coordinator is awesome. Everybody is um, kind of working towards the same goal and, and we share our experiences and it's been nothing but crazy and fun. Thank you, Mia. What, could you tell us more about your daily routine what do you generally do when you get to the office and how what's the best way to interact with coordinators let's say if somebody is unsure who to contact at their site obviously you are at mgh but there's many more sites how, what's the best um, approach to contact coordinators um so starting with the daily coordinator role so i come in i write down a very long list of things that i have to do that day there's never not something to do as a coordinator um, and one day you might be inputting data into the computer all day. Um, sometimes the study team gets together to discuss participants just to make sure everyone's doing okay. If anyone needs anything, um, we often have to get in touch with like primary care offices and just make sure that the whole team is included because we want to do um, like an accountable care kind of organization type thing. So, um, and we also run visits. So you're preparing for a visit, um, you're setting up the room. Once you have the visit, you're making sure that all of the source docs are there, especially if it's like a screening and an investigator is there. So you want to make sure everything is perfect. Um, and then after that, like I said, you run right back to your desk, you put everything in the computer, you make sure you didn't miss anything. Um, and that just is it's on and on and on you're chasing your tail. That's basically what you do every day. Um, and if you're not sure how to get into contact with the coordinator, um, if you're on a study, it's in your consent form, but if you're not even on a study, um, it's in the welcome packet that we give at the Healy Center. Um, we give it out in clinic. And if you're not even sure there, it's on the, um, the website for the Healy Center. Um, and if you wanna get in contact with a research trial at a different site, you can talk to our amazing patient navigator, Catherine Small, of course, and also Judy Carey, she'll let you know. She's like our, those are our two um, parents on our family tree. So they'll help you get in contact with us. Thank you so much. And obviously, you know, this webinar, uh, I know at times people ask questions about sites. I know Catherine always puts the contact information and, and that's also why we, in the chat as you just did, <laughs> and that's also why um, we love to have representatives from different sites come um, on this webinar, uh, whether they are coordinators, nurses, or, or investigators, so that really you can put a face to a name. Uh, and, you know, also all of this is recorded. So if you have questions about specific sites, they're all on our website. Uh, um, and again, I also want to acknowledge that there's a lot of uh, information out there. Um, you know, the patient navigator for the platform trial. There's also NEILS. I know Alison works a lot with the NEILS committee. 
um, peace committee, uh, as well as other groups, uh, different patient organizations that have a lot of information on their website. So uh, certainly great to, to, to look that up. And if we can go to the next slide, uh, again, as we as you know, we have been testing different drugs, and as Mia explained, the first four drugs uh, could be taken either by mouth or by self um, injection, and so basically uh, they didn't require um, infusions or intravenous infusions. The most recent drug, the one that we are enrolling for, is Trialos, and requires uh, weekly infusions. But uh, th there's a lot of perks in terms of uh, getting to know the the site team so well, and as as Mia mentioned uh, during the beginning of the study when patients come in uh, weekly, uh, that really gives them the opportunity to get to know the research team um, very well. Uh, and then uh, depending on the site and depending on the specifics, uh, people can be transitioned to home infusions, again, using this vendor, basically nurses go to your home, that essentially an extension of the site. And so every week, there's somebody in the patient's home, um, you know, for, for additional care and, and obviously the infusion of the drug. Um, so um, really, really, great to see that this um, intravenous infusion trial is really going well in terms of also the logistics. You know, obviously, in the era of the pandemic, we had questions when we began, you know, are, are we going to be able to deliver home infusions given the context and the pandemic? And the answer is yes. So we've been able to do that safely, effectively. Um, and so uh, we're basically, you know, hoping to close enrollment very soon. Next slide. Uh, if you have any questions, so we do still have a few spots available. So if you have any questions about the mechanism of action of the drug or the logistics of Regimen E, if you are interested in participating, please check out these resources that are available on our website. Next slide. We currently have 60 sites that have been activity for Regimen E. So every week we had a few, well, one, for the last few weeks we've been adding one a week. And so um, it's, um, you know, again, the most recent ones are, are listed on the site, but essentially now we are, uh, you know, operating across a very large network of 60 sites. And again, we are, we are hoping to complete enrollment soon. So I think the next slide will show the enrollment numbers. So the target enrollment for every regimen is about 160 individuals. And so far, 129 have been randomized within the regimen, which means that they're certainly in. Uh, so we're basically looking for another 30 people. A few people are still in screening. What that means is that the first step for entering the trial is to sign informed consent. Unfortunately, some individuals may not be eligible for the trial, uh, and so they cannot be included. The majority of people are included, but there's a few people that due to medical contraindications may not be eligible for the trial or due to specific characteristics. So, so again, um, we, we, we still have 30 spots and, and we really um, hope to, to be able to close enrollment very soon. Next slide. And with that, again, just a reminder, uh, we have the webinar this week and we're going to have another webinar next week, uh, but then we will take a two week break. So, but certainly we will be back in, in the new year for sure. All right. And I, oh, and this is actually important. Thank you for reminding me. We had one more slide. Um, so we, we are planning, we are already working actively on setting up uh, the next two regimens, and we have more in the pipeline. But essentially, we really want to uh, always have spots for patients uh, with very short breaks in between regimens or, or maybe no break at all. So this time, we are uh, really working closely on the last few pieces to be able to launch two regimens in um, 2023, in, in the first part of 2023. The first one was previously announced, Regimen F, uh, for a drug that's made by Calico Avi. And the, the most recent one was just announced this week. Um, and it's a different drug uh, made by Denali. Uh, and, and, and both um, the drug by Calico and by Denali are, are uh, scheduled to start enrolling in the first part of 2023. So again, we're working actively on that so that we can have two regimens going on at the same time. I also want to mention that um, we're working with other, uh, with a couple other regimen partners. So those have not been announced yet, but hopefully they will follow right after. So, um, so again, uh, we're very excited to have uh, two drugs that are um, we're really actively working on to be able to start enrolling for these two new regimens in early 2023. Regimens F and G. All right. Uh, question: uh, Will Calico and Denali, the two new 
regimen partners offer a companion EAP? Well, I really hope so. Uh, certainly, this is this has been one of the uh, topics of conversation. Uh, I cannot uh, tell you again the logistics because we haven't finalized them, but we always ask uh, every regimen partner to offer a companion EAP. Uh, there are some companies that have their own internal policies and rules about EAPs, and they may want to wait until they have, they're a little bit more into the trial. So I, I don't know yet uh, for regimens F and G um, what the final policy or timelines will be, but certainly that's something that we always um, ask. Absolutely. I see that there's a hand raised in the audience. If possible, can you please submit the questions in the Q&A box? And do you share the webinar deck following the Zoom? I believe so. I think everything is posted on our website. So if you go on, on our um, uh, website, uh, you can find that. Question about what's the target of uh, Calico and Denali? Well, they, they both target uh, essentially the same mechanism, uh, which is uh, which is we, we think is important in ALS. It's called the ISR or integrated stress response. Um, and again, we have been including drugs that uh, target many different mechanisms. Uh, as you know, we, we really been uh, keeping um, you know keeping this broad because we don't know what mechanism uh, will ultimately prove to be you know, most important in ALS. And quite frankly, there may be more than one. So we've really been trying to address different uh, pathways. Um, and and we think right now at treated drugs that are approved for ALS, they all target different mechanisms. And so now here, we're gonna be testing the same mechanism with two different drugs. Um, and again, uh, more to come on that. Ryan, thank you for um, sharing the, um, the link to the PDF slides. Oh, I, we just got a question and I'm so happy about this question. Um, have um, other groups working in other neurodegenerative diseases reached out to us to learn how to run a platform trial in their disease? And thank you for your comment. Somebody wrote, uh, this is such a great way to test um, drugs for neurology as fast as possible and would love to see it across the neurospace. Well, I'm glad you asked because we've been contacted uh, as of today by 15, one, five, you know, 15 groups in different areas, everything from different types of muscle disease, muscular dystrophies of different types, um, neuropathies, traumatic brain injuries, spinal cord injury, and, and other diseases. So we've certainly been uh, sharing uh, everything that we have learned. Um, and with some groups, we only had maybe one or two meetings. With other groups, we are actually continuing the conversation and we have shared a number of our documents. Um, I know the Parkinson's group is really, um, you know, we shared a lot of documents with them and I know they're moving forward with their uh, platform trial uh, and, and we continue to provide input. So certainly um, this has been very active, very active uh, uh, area for us. Uh, you know, we just do it because we want to share the knowledge and we really hope that others can benefit from that. Uh, we are also publishing our papers open access and we are planning on posting even more resources online. We already have the protocol online. We have our publication po um, policy, other documents on our website. And as we continue to publish, we will continue to publish again more resources on our website. Um, uh, yeah, questions about regimen D. Yes, regimen D. Um, it's still um, we're still working on the results. I know uh, that you know we have um, we've been waiting on this for a little bit. The reason actually is that there's a lot of analysis in regimen D. Regimen D has a lot more analysis. Uh, so um, so again, uh, thank you for your patience. But as soon as we have the results, we will communicate them. Somebody said it would be neat to have a platform trial group across neuro diseases, absolutely. And that should include, you know, different groups, including patients and families. Uh, that's actually, you know, something that we've been wanting to do as well. Uh, I, I do think that there will soon be some workshop on platform trial designs and, and similar across the neuro space. For now, I think we, we have done it in ALS and, and then definitely um, as we continue to share, um, this is absolutely something we would want to do even a conference about it. Uh, and we need to continue to publish. That's one thing you know we're actively doing um, to, to really write papers and share them freely. So more to come on this. Great. So I see those are the questions that we received tonight. Um, so I just wanted to ask um, Catherine and Alison if they have any, um, any anything they want to share based on your recent conversations with people living with ALS. Well, I think um, 
you've hit all the most important topics, Dr. Paganoni. I do want to also remind people that there's a new video out about the Healy Platform trial so that we can share that. And if people can help us share that across their networks, that would be fantastic. Great. Catherine, anything from you based on the questions you've been receiving? I was pulling up the video in the background, trying to be sneaky, okay. but um, I was going to say one thing that um, we used to ask after every webinar is if you have ideas or suggestions for topics that you want us to address on these webinars, um, we are constantly plotting in the background things to um, keep things interesting and give you the information that you're looking for. Um, so if you have ideas for things you want us to cover in 2023, um, we'll be working on booking guest speakers and you know special topic webinars. So um, I would still be the go-to person for that. So questions about the platform trial, you can send to me or suggestions for these webinars, um, you can send to me as well. Yeah, we had two people who asked for the link to the video. So yeah, if you yep, so that I'll put that in the chat. Right yeah, thank you. And while you do that, me, I'll give you the final word. Me, the final word? Yes, you. <laughs> wow, you make the trial so happen. So, yeah, you make the trial happen. Um, and oh. so, tell, you know, any anything you want to share? Um, I just want to say um, thank you to everyone that's participated in research. You're not just helping um, yourself. You're also helping so many others along the line. And so many people will benefit from this research. So, I mean, huge thank you. It's really I run the trial with Catherine and all of our other coordinators, but really it takes it takes the participants to really make it shine. So thank you. Well said, and I will we'll end there. Uh, thank you so much, and I'll, we'll see you next week. Thank you.